you back at each and every opportunity that you might have to be with us. Brother Jeff Gray will be leading our song service this morning, number 536. 536. I'll have the opening prayer. Brother Jimmy Tidwell will have our closing prayer. Brother Greg Enlow will be directing our minds in the Lord's Supper. If you have not picked up those Lord's Supper supplies, they're on the table there in the foyer. Uh, as you come in, if you hadn't picked those up yet, you might want to do so during the announcements. I uh, ask that you please, after the Lord's Supper is over this morning, uh, we have trash cans on the back. Uh, if you would, please carry that stuff uh, and put that in the trash can after services. Happy Mother's Day. Have a lot of visitors this morning. Uh, a lot of mothers here. has got children in from all over and everywhere, so uh, glad you're here. Glad you're with us this morning. Uh, and, of course, I want to wish all of you mothers a happy Mother's Day. Coming up uh, next Sunday will be our senior night here at Liberty. Uh, I have six seniors this year, so be uh, celebrating with them at 7 o'clock after our evening worship services up on the hill. Uh, keep in mind, uh, we do have those guest lists. Uh, all the students for those turn in. If your name is not on one of those students' guest lists, uh, there is another list on the table in the foyer. As that you sign up on that list. Uh, that's how we'll be ordering food uh, for this service this time, be doing things a little bit different uh, because of the situation that we are in. So uh, if you haven't signed up on that list and you want to, you can come to the graduation, uh, but you won't have anything to eat. So just be prepared. I have warned you, okay? Uh, list is on the table. Sign up uh, if you can today. We need to get that. I've got to get started on all that stuff in the morning. Also, coming up next week, a uh, gospel meeting at the Maud Church of Christ, May the 14th through the 16th. Uh, Brother David will be there uh, preaching in that, so ask that all of you this next week, every day, remember Brother David uh, as he'll be going and uh, uh, sharing the message there with those folks there, so keep him in mind as well. On our sympathy list, I uh, need to remember Hugh Cavender. This is Alex Sarton's grandfather. Also, Barbara Livingston. Uh, her services are at McMillan Funeral Home in Boonville. Uh, that is, visitation begins at 11 today, and that funeral is at 2. Her son, Larry, uh, made the statement that uh, he understands the, the situation, the time that we live in right now with all the things going on uh, with COVID, that if you felt uncomfortable coming, then, then the family totally understood. Uh, but if you, know, if you do feel comfortable, I'm sure they would appreciate uh, your presence and also your prayers as well. Also, a uh, family of Tanya Jenkins, uh, remember that family, and then also the Charlie Thorne family. That funeral is also today at 2 o'clock at Belmont. Barbara's. Barbara's is tomorrow, okay. Uh, so continue to remember that. Barbara's is tomorrow. I wrote down today. There's too many announcements, too many things to remember. Uh, but remember that family. Also. On our prayer list, uh, those uh, have had several that's requested prayer. Need to remember Joe Ewing is having heart problems. Uh, Arlene Carr uh, was carried to the Tupelo Hospital earlier this week, last week. Uh, Joyce White, Larry Sarton, uh, continue to remember all of those that we've had on our prayer list. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Also, if you haven't checked your mailboxes out back, some of these seniors are dropping off some things. I'm sure they would appreciate it if you'd pick those up. Uh, and, and so might want to do that before you leave today. That's all the announcements I have this morning. If there's anything I've overlooked, get that to me. I'll get it corrected tonight. Let's begin our services with a prayer. Our most kind and loving Heavenly Father, we're most grateful for the opportunity that we have to be here today. Father, we pray that you'll help us to dismiss the thoughts of this day, dismiss the thoughts of this world, Help us, Father, this morning to focus upon you, focus upon your word. Uh, help us, Father, to remember uh, the great sacrifice of your son, Jesus, who so willingly came to this earth and died for each and every one of us for the forgiveness of our sins. We just thank you so much for this blessing. Father, we thank you so much for all the things you bless us with. Father, uh, our, all the material things. 
Father, our homes and, and, and cars, and Father, you just bless us with so much. We, we're so grateful for you, but also, Father, we're grateful for the, all the spiritual blessings, all the prayers that you've answered on behalf of all of those who have been sick. Uh, Father, we pray now at this time for all those that was mentioned on our prayer list. You know their individual needs. You know the family's needs. Father, we pray in some way that you will bless those families. And Father, also help us that as we see the opportunity to help, opportunity to do good, uh, that we'll take advantage of those opportunities. Father, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones, the Cavender family, the Livingston family, the Jenkins family, the Thorne family. Father, we just pray uh, that in some way you will give them comfort and understanding. Father, we pray that each and every one of those families will look to your word for that comfort and wisdom that they need. Father, and help us also as we see opportunity to do good to help those that may be struggling. Father, we pray at this time for our government, for the leadership of this country, for the leadership of our state. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, you would be with them, that you would give them the wisdom and the knowledge to make the decisions that's made upon a daily basis uh, for the betterment of this country. Father, we pray that uh, your word is always taken into consideration when, when those decisions are made. Father, this morning we also pray for each and every person that's inside this building. We pray, Father, that uh, you will continue to bless us with health. You will continue to bless us, Father, with knowledge. Uh, help us, Father, to encourage one another and love one another and edify one another, Father, each and every day. Father, we pray that your word will continue to grow in our community, but throughout the world we pray for all those who are uh, in the mission fields, all of those who are preaching and teaching the word, we pray, Father, that you'd bless them in their work and the time that they spend preparing. Father, this morning we also ask that you pray for Brother David as he gets ready to bring the message this morning. We pray that each one of us will listen attentively. Uh, Father, we'll open our hearts, we'll open our minds and hear your word and allow your word to work throughout our lives. Thank you, Father, for this church and all of those who are involved with so many works of it. Uh, we pray, Father, that you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 536, if you would, let us stand as we sing this song, please. We'll sing the first and last verses. To Canaan's land I'm on my way where the soul never dies my darkest night will turn to day where the soul never dies no sad farewells no tears where all Song be two hundred twenty six, number two hundred twenty six. After you turn to two hundred and twenty six, everybody get your Bibles. Get your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter thirty one. Proverbs thirty one. Like to join in with Jimmy to say Happy Mother's Day 
such a beautiful day and we've got a great crowd together and you're here to honor your mothers. Many of you are here to be with them and we appreciate your presence today. Mother, you know, we uh, often go to Proverbs 21 or 31 when we're thinking about a good woman. Relationships are precious. If we have a good, balanced relationships in our lives, then, then we, we have good, solid things going on, whether it be with our bosses, whether it be with the community, a, a husband and a wife, that they have a special, balanced relationship, a, a, a wonderful relationship, a father and a child. He wants to protect his children. That's a good relationship. But the relationship between a mother and her children are special indeed. A mother wants her child to be successful in life, wants her child to be strong in life, to, to be able to, to handle whatever life may throw at them. And if we'll just listen to our mothers, and we'll listen to a wise mother who does in fact want that successful, strong life for their children, and we try to take those advices and, and, and put it into our own lives, then we'll make all of our relationships better. We'll make the relationship with our spouse better. We'll make the relationship with, with our friends better. Because that mother wants us to be successful, wants us to be strong. Well, what is the answer to having a successful, a strong life? Well, Proverbs 31 is a mother giving her advice to her son. The Holy Spirit, of course, wrote Proverbs 31. The inspired Word of God is from the Holy Spirit. But in Proverbs 31, we see that it was written by, inspired by the Holy Spirit, somebody called Lemuel's mother. Look at verse number one. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. So Solomon, who wrote the majority of, of, of the Proverbs, did he write this, this particular wise chapter? Well, some people say that maybe he did. Because if you look at all the kings, we've been studying the history portion of the Bible on Wednesday night. I hope that you're tuning in on the, the Wednesday night through the Bible. But we've just finished the kings, and there was no King Lemuel. Not in the south, north or not in the south, there was no King Lemuel. There may have been a king that came and visited Solomon, that made a friend with Solomon from outside in the Gentile world, but there's no mention of that King Lemuel. Who in the world is King Lemuel? We don't know. But the word Lemuel, you know, the names mean something. The meaning of the name Lemuel is belonging to God. It's got the L in it. Lemuel, anything that's got L in it has to do with God. Emmanuel, God with us. Bethel, the house of God. So here we have Lemuel, and it means belonging to God. Some scholars believe that Solomon is talking about himself here. I belong to God. I am the king. So therefore, I am King Lemuel. I am the king that belongs to God. Maybe, maybe Solomon did write it. Well, if he did, he said it's the words which his mother taught him. Well, Solomon's mother is Bathsheba. So maybe God inspired Bathsheba to give these wise words uh, to Solomon himself. We don't know exactly, but whoever, regardless which mother God used to, to give this message to her child, the message is, I want you to succeed. I want you to be strong. Now, we often use Proverbs 31, verse 10, through the rest of the chapter, from 10 to 31. It's the virtuous woman. We, we use that a lot at, at good, solid women's funerals. And I think that's appropriate. When we have a lady that has passed away and, and she's a wonderful person and we want to express just how, how virtuous she was, then we often go to Proverbs 31 beginning at verse number 10 and read about all the qualities that this virtuous woman 
possesses, and, and we put that onto the, the lady that we're honoring, and rightfully so. What King Lemuel's mother is telling Mr. Lemuel, the king, you, you need a good woman. <laughs> you, you know, this is what a good woman looks like. And, and then explains all the qualities of this good woman. And so you study that sometime. But what she says prior to verse number 10, in verses 1 through 9, what is she really trying to communicate when she explains about this virtuous woman? What is she trying to communicate to her king's son? Well, let's look at the first two verses of Proverbs chapter 31. Of course, we've already looked at the first where it says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Mom, you want to teach me something. And what you want to teach me is how to be successful in life, how to, how to be strong. I'm a king, and you want me to be a good king. Now, you, you're going to tell me in verses 10 through 31 that, that a good person, a, a good woman, is this kind of quality person. But you got something else to tell me. Look at verse number 2. What, my son, and what the son of my womb? What, the son of my vowels? Uh, I've got something to say to you. What is it? Here it is. Number 1, verse number 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. You cannot be a successful, strong king if you give away your strength. To women. Now, a good woman, verses 10 through 31, you need. You need this good woman. She's a, she's a good support. She has all these qualities. But don't give away your strength to these bad women. What's a bad woman? Well, you can look at all the qualities of the virtuous woman and look at the opposite of those things, and that would be a, a non-virtuous woman. So don't give away your strength to this non-virtuous woman, a woman that doesn't uh, hold you into to high regard, a woman that doesn't work with her hands, a woman that doesn't do all these things that a virtuous woman does. And, and I think she's, she's saying to, to King Lemuel, you've got a responsibility. You're a king. I want you to be successful, and I want you to be strong in life. Don't give your strength away to other people. Now, in this case, it's women. Maybe she knows that her son, King Lemuel, whoever he is, has a little bit of weakness with the women. If it's Solomon, maybe we could see that he did have a weakness with the women. But, uh, nonetheless, she's basically saying in, in that verse, don't give away your, your control to other people. And that's what we often do. We will never be successful. Mama is telling us, this mother is telling us, if you want to be successful, if you want to be strong, don't let other people control your life. Don't give away your strength. Don't give away control of your life to somebody else. Maybe it's your friend that's got all these things that they want you to do. they got all these things they want you to participate in. You need to be strong. You need to be successful. Don't give that strength away to them. Don't let them control your life. And when and they call you up and they, and they give you a bad word, they criticize you, they hurt you, and, and, and all of a sudden your day's ruined. Well, you've just given your strength away. King Lemuel, don't give your strength away to other people. Just don't do it. Here's something else, King Lemuel. Look at verse number four. It is not for kings, King Lemuel, my son, it's not... For kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor the prince's strong drink. If you're, if you're in control and you've got responsibilities and you need to be strong and successful, you don't need to be drinking alcohol. It's not for kings to do that. Verse number five, lest they drink, because here's what's going to happen if they drink. What? They will forget the law. You drink and it clouds your mind. You, you forget what God wants you to do. Also, you forget and you pervert the judgment. You, you're a king. You're in control. You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be successful. And if you drink alcohol, it's going to cloud your mind, and you might actually pervert judgment. 
You're supposed to give good judgment, quality judgment, but you don't. You're under the influence of alcohol, therefore you are giving perverted judgment. You're not making good decisions now of any of the afflicted. Now, you're a king and you're supposed to be the king of the afflicted. People who are under your power, under your control. And if you give up your strength to alcohol, then you're not going to be a good king to these afflicted people that you're supposed to serve. Look at verse 6. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. And I don't want you to perish, King Lemuel. You're a strong king. I want you to be a successful guy. I don't want you to perish. You give alcohol to people who are going to perish. And give wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. See, I don't want you to go through life sorrowful. I don't want you to go through life with your head bowed low and your heart heavy. Give alcohol to those kind of people. I want you to be successful. I want you to be strong. I want you to be able to walk through life with a happy heart. So stay away from alcohol. Let him, look at verse number 7, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Let people who don't want to uh, participate in life, let, they want to forget their poverty. They want to forget their misery. They want to forget life. Let them drink. I don't want you to drink because it's not going to allow you to uh, be happy. Uh, you're going to be cloudy. Now, it's not just out. Maybe King Lemuel's mama knew that King Lemuel needed to hear that. If it was Solomon, maybe he did. He had problem with women. He had problem with wine. And so that's particularly what she picked out is the, is the, is the alcohol. But it could be anything. Mama would tell me, don't let people control your lives, but don't let anything control your life. Don't give your strength over to something out there. What, what, it may not be alcohol. It may be fame. I just want to be famous, so I'll do anything to become famous. I just want to be rich. I'll do anything. If I have to steal, kill, or destroy, I'll do it to get money. Uh, whatever that thing is in your life, if you want to be successful, if you want to be strong, Mama told King here, then don't let anything take away and rob your control. You're giving your power over to this thing. You're giving your power over to this person. Don't do it. So, Mama, what is it that you want me to do? I can just hear King Lemuel say, Okay, Mama, you don't want anyone to control me. You don't want anything to control me. What do you want me to do? What is the secret to success? What is the secret for me to be a strong king? Here it is. Verse number 8. Open your mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as were appointed to destruction. Help people. Help people. There are people, in this case, who are dumb. D-U-M-B. That doesn't mean that they're stupid. That means that they have no voice. They can't speak for themselves. They have no power to speak for themselves. You're the king. You have power. Now, don't give that power away to anybody. Don't give that power away to anything. You use that power. For what? To help people. Open your mouth for people who don't have a mouth. They don't have a voice. They are set for destruction. They're in trouble. So you go help the people that you have power to help and get them out of trouble. Look at verse 9. Open thy mouth and judge righteously. Now, if you give your power over to these women or over to these people, well, you're not going to be able to make righteous judgment because you're going to judge whatever they tell you to judge. And if you give your power over alcohol or over something, you're not going to make righteous judgment because that's going to cloud your judgment. No, if you want to be successful, if you want to be strong, you use your power to help people and judge righteously. And, listen, the last part of that verse, plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Those people who are poor, those people who are needy, those people who are weak and they don't have strength, use your strength to help those people. Mama would want me to help people. King Lemuel's mama would want him to help people. We're going to use the word help, H-E-L-P, and if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, we're going to use a word that starts with H, 
Then a word that starts with E, and then a word that starts with L, and the words that start with P, and that will help us to understand how I can help others. How is it that I can help others? How is it that mamas want to help their kids? Well, if I can look at that and I say, well, that's the way a mama wants to help their kids. Well, I want to take that relationship, I want to take those attitudes, that quality, and I want to put it into my life so that I can help in all of my relationships so that I can be successful, so that I can be strong. The first word we're going to use is handout or hand up. Sometimes to help somebody, you got to give them something. you got to give them a handout. And other people like to look at that as a hand up. You know, I'm giving you this thing. You, you have got, you're in trouble and you need some money. You need a car. You need, you need this thing. And, and, and that thing will give you some help. So sometimes that's exactly what mama would do. That's exactly what I need to do to help others is to give them something. Give them a hand out or give them a hand up. In Proverbs chapter number 3. Verse number 27, listen to what Solomon says. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in thy power of the hand to do it. If there's somebody in trouble, and, it, and, and to them it's due, that means that it is an opportunity to help them then don't hold your hand from them when it's in your power to do it. you got the power to, to help them. Help them. Give them a hand out. Give them a hand up. James chapter 2, verse 16. Here's what James says. One of you may say unto them, talking about somebody who's coming and asking for help. Maybe they don't have any clothes. They don't have any food. Uh, they're hungry. They're naked. He said, if one of you says, depart in peace, be ye warmed, be ye filled, but notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. Well, what does it profit? He's talking about faith and works, but the principle's the same. If somebody comes and says, I need help, and you say, well, I hope you get all the help you need. You know, you're just, just be ye warm, be ye filled, go on your way, and you never give them anything, then how did you help them? Sometimes we need to give them a hand out. We need to give them a hand up, but... Doesn't stop there when you're helping people. Let the E stand for educate. Sometimes mama just needs to sit down at the table with a uh, daughter or son and, and just teach them. Educate them. There's that old saying. Now, young people, this is not in the Bible, but it is a good saying. If you give a man a fish, then you fed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you fed him for the rest of his life. Isn't that a great saying? Sometimes when you give somebody a hand out, then you've helped them for today. But tomorrow they're going to be back in the same shape that they were in. But if you teach them, look, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you this hand out or this hand up. But sit down with me. Let me educate you. Let me teach you about how to handle your money. Let me teach you about how to handle this situation in your life. Let me educate you. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 8, my son, Solomon is writing this text, and he's talking to his son. He says, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Listen to people. Listen to your mom and daddy. Listen to folks. Be educated. Help people by telling them what's right and what's wrong and what can help them. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 28. Paul, talking to the Colossians, he's, he's in prison. <laughs> he's under house arrest in Rome. And he's writing to these Colossians. And here's what he's telling them. Whom, talking about Jesus, we preach. We're preaching Jesus. We're educating you Colossians about Jesus. We warn every man. We're warning you. You're going to die and go to hell. And, and we're warning you to get your life right. And teaching every man in all wisdom. Why? Why are we warning you? Why are we teaching you? That, here's the reason, we may present every man perfect in Christ. 
Perfect means complete. We are educating you so that you can be right in the sight of God. So when you're helping people, you're not just giving them stuff, a hand out or a hand up. You're also teaching them and educate them about how to do better. But love them. Sometimes you give them something, it don't matter. They just take it and 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 take it some more. Then you try to educate them. You know this, you know that, this should be, this should be, and it don't matter. They're not listening. They're forsaking your, your, your instruction. You can still help them. Simply love them. Just keep loving them. Oh, how can I love them? They've done taking me to the, all the way down to a nub, and, and they don't listen. Every time I walk into the room, they just put their hands up or they walk out of the room. They don't listen to me. How can I keep helping them? How can I keep loving them? Do it. If you want to help them, then you've got to keep loving them. Amen? A little bit louder? Amen. Yes. If you want to help them, you've got to love them. Love is so very important. And here's the thing. Sometimes they don't need a handout. I got everything I need. I got two cars. I got a big house. I got all this wonderful stuff. I got a great job. I got all this. I don't need your money. Uh, well, let me tell you, I don't need to hear it. Why? I already know it. You've been teaching me that since I was a little one. You've been, every, the preacher teaches me that. Everybody teaches me that. I already know it. So they don't need your, your handout. They don't need your education. They just need your love. If you want to help them, love them. You don't always have to give them stuff, and you don't always have to tell them anything. Love them. In John 13, verse number 34, A new commandment I give you, you know this verse, that you love one another as, listen, I have loved you. This is Jesus talking. Love each other like I love you. Now, Jesus loved me so much. How much? John 15, verse 13. Jesus said this, Greater love hath no man than this, what? That a man should lay down his life for his friends. I'll die for you. That's how much Jesus loves me. Romans 5, verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us in that. How did he do it? How did he commend his love to me? Here it is. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's love, folks. We rejected his handout, or we don't need it. We rejected his education, or we don't need it, because we already know it. Love him. Jesus loves me so much. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Love him through it. In while they were yet sinners. Yeah, but they're, they're taking my stuff. They're not listening to me. I don't care. Love them. And finally, pray for them. Pray for them. James chapter 5, verse number 16. You know, a lot of times when we're trying to help somebody, we're exasperated. We've gave them the handouts. We've told them everything we know to tell them. And we love them so much that we would die for them. I mean, we would just lay down and just die for them. We're exasperated because it doesn't seem to be helping. It doesn't seem to be helping. Don't stop. The biggest help you can help them is pray for them. How can that help? How can that work? Well, listen to James 5:16. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. And here is the reason that James can say that, that you can be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. It helps. we got to come believing that it will help. But believe with all your heart that your prayers are making a difference. Oh, well, I've given them everything. I've taught them everything. I've loved them. But I haven't even prayed for them. I haven't taken one minute to pray for them. Then have we really helped them? Now, we've helped them 
by handing stuff to them, by educating them, by loving them. That's good. That's wonderful. But don't forget to pray. It avails much. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 11. Paul talking to the Thessalonians. He said, wherefore also we pray, listen, we pray always for you. Paul down there in Corinth. They kicked him out of Thessalonica. They run him off. Uh, whooped up on one of the Christian friends and, and he thought his presence there was causing a lot of problems. So he had to leave. He only got to stay there like three weeks. That's on his heart. That's on his mind. Oh, how he wanted to help them. Well, he couldn't give them anything. He didn't have anything. And of course, he was educating them. He was teaching them about what to do to be saved and so forth. And he definitely loved them. But listen, I pray for you always. Why or how? That our God would count you worthy of this calling. And I'm praying that fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and work of faith and power. I'm praying that you will be successful and you will be strong. I'm praying for that because it's his will. It's his goodness. I want you to obey the will of God. That's what I'm praying for. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 3 says this. I thank God. Paul writing to Timothy, and he's in jail. He's about to be killed. At the end of this letter, he's going to say, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I'm fixing to die. Now, now I love you, Timothy, and I really want to help you. Now, I've given you what I could give you. I've educated you through our ministry. I love you to death. But now, I'm praying for you. He says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing, I don't stop. I have remembrance of you, Timothy. I want to help you, Timothy. I'm going to die, but I want to help you, Timothy. I have remembrance of thee in my prayers, listen, night and day. I pray for you all the time. I'm not sure that I really am helping the folks that I need to be helping the way I should be helping. I'm, I'm quick to give them something. <laughs> what do you need? Well, I need the, okay, here, take it. I don't, I've had it for 40 years. It's been sitting in my garage. Don't, here, take it. If it'll help you, take it. And by the way, let me teach you that you really need to do better in your finances so you won't have to come and get my stuff. And, and, and let me tell you, I love you. I love you very much. That's why I want you to succeed and I want you to do better. But I need to pray more because the effectual fervent prayer makes a difference. That'll help. Jesus loves you so very much. And he's helped you. He's helped me. He, he's educated us, right? Standing on that Sermon on the Mount and give us all these principles. Gave us the Word of God. And the Gospels tell us all these parables. Oh, He's full of education. And he, and he loves us. So much so that He was willing to die for us. Now that's love. And He prayed for us. Did you know that? In John chapter number 17, if you read very carefully, He is praying for us. David Conley. He said, I'm not only praying for my apostles here, I'm praying for every who believes based on their word. Well, I believe based on the apostles' word, so Jesus prayed for me. So Jesus, help me. Jesus is teaching me. Jesus loves me. And Jesus prayed for me. Folks, Jesus has helped me to the nth degree. Am I willing to let him help me? There's the kicker. I cannot make people do things or not do things. I can help them, but I can't make them. Jesus says, here's my plan. Hear it, believe it, repent it, confess, be baptized, live faithfully. I want to help you. Why don't you let it? Why don't you come? While together we stand and sing. Coming a great day, coming there's a great day, coming by and by, when the saints and the sinners shall be parted.
it right and left. Are ye ready to Supper, let us stand and sing number 393. <clears throat> number 393, we'll sing all three verses. Ought we come together? Ought we sing and pray?
this time we'll do our Lord's Supper and let's pray for the bread. Our Lord, most holy Father in heaven, we are especially blessed that we can gather around this table to partake of this memorial feast. And we ask thee, Lord, as we partake of this bread that represents the body of our Savior that was broken on the cross, that we will partake of this in a manner that's well-pleasing to thee. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray. Likewise, Father, we're thankful for this fruit of the vine that represents the blood that our Savior shed on the cross for our sins. We ask thee, Lord, that we would turn our minds back to this sacrifice and be thankful for what he's done for us and partake of this in a way that's pleasing to these. Our prayer in Christ's name, amen. At this time, separate and apart from the Lord's Supper, we will do our offering. Our Lord, most holy Father in heaven, we are so thankful for all the blessings you bestow upon us each day of our lives. We're so very well blessed, and sometimes we fail to thank you for that, but we ask the Lord to help us always be thankful for all the things that you give us each day of our lives, our spiritual blessings and material blessings, and especially, Lord, we're thankful that You've given us the ability to provide for our families, and we ask the Lord at this time that we would search our hearts and be very cheerful with our giving and give back to Thee what's appropriately yours. Is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Once again, we really appreciate everybody being together, and you're always welcome here at the Liberty Church of Christ. Always, and happy Mother's Day. And we're so happy that God inspired a mother to encourage us to not let anyone or anything rob us of our power to help. Hope you have a great day. Be back tonight at 6. Let us stand and sing one verse of 526. <coughs> Number 526. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can fill at home in this world anymore. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we had this morning to worship you and to thank you for all the many blessings of this life. And we pray that we've said and done the things that pleases you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for salvation. Thankful for all our Lord is willing to do that we could be saved and stand before thee accepted and blessed. We know that's the greatest blessing that a man can have. We pray, Heavenly Father, this morning for all the mothers, and we're thankful for the blessing that they have been in their lives. We ask you this morning to be with all those that are sick and hurting. We ask you to be with them, and we especially ask you to be with those that have lost loved ones this morning or this week. and ask you to be with them as they go through difficult times. 
We're thankful for the fine lesson that Brother David brought us this morning. We ask you to continue to be with him and be with him as he goes to Maud and preaches for the brethren there. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for the church family and pray, Heavenly Father, for the elders and the deacons, Brother David and Brother Jimmy. Just thank you for caring for us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>